I want to grow my business. I want to get more clients. I want to make more impact. I want to have freedom. I don't care about my marketing. My marketing is a tool that's going to help me get to where I want to go. Welcome to the Take Back Your Business interview series, where I chat with industry influencers on how they have found more joy and freedom in their business by taking back what matters to them. So I'm your host, Lauren Black, creative strategist and owner of Bosscation, a business retreat in a box to help entrepreneurs get away from your daily distractions to strategically plan for your business. So if you want to see more industry influencers and their interviews, as well as hear about our free challenge and giveaway of Take Back Your Biz, head on over to bosscation.com forward slash take back your biz. So today I am so excited to bring you our guest, Maggie Gila, who is an award-winning marketing and business strategist. So I love Maggie's approach to business. She has this whole like fantasy theme that comes out in everything she does. So for me as a, you know, brand designer background, it's it, seeing something that's so branded is just really stands out. And that's why I was really excited to bring her on to this series, especially the topic she'll be sharing. But um, Maggie says, think about, you can think about Maggie as your wand waving spell casting partner in crime to help you carve a path through the magical forest where dreamy clients, business growth and freedom await. So everything she touches is just magical. And uh, so I am excited to chat with Maggie today about taking back your impact. And that is something that Maggie has definitely experienced. So welcome and thanks for coming. Well, thank you so much for having me, Lauren. Yes. So let's hear a little bit about your story and how you have taken back your impact. What does this mean for you? And what has this done for your business? Absolutely. Um, I think when I started out with my business, I didn't have the confidence to do what I wanted to do. Um, I have a master's in marketing strategy actually, but I didn't feel confident enough because my focus hadn't been in online marketing. So I thought, all right, I need to listen to what everyone else is saying instead of going my own way. And, and I'm sure a lot of people, I don't know, maybe you too, Lauren can emphasize with it, empathize with this. Um, probably say something to my business. I was on Facebook, like literally from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to sleep and sometimes in the middle of the night as well. Like, yes. because the thing to do was you post in like, you pick five different Facebook groups, you post there like three times a day or something along those lines. And I was trying to do that. I was trying to like give value as much as possible. I was working my butt off and I basically didn't have any clients. Like the only clients I got were from personal relationships, from networking, but I didn't get any from the actual marketing I was doing. And I very strongly believe that all this Craft basically I was doing on social media um, led me to a burnout. I ended up in the emergency room um, and it took me weeks to recover. I, I couldn't hold a 15 minute conversation because I just, I had to take a nap or take a break. Um, so it took me weeks to recover from that um, experience. And I realized like, if I actually want to build my own business, which I really desperately wanted to do, I don't really like authority. So I didn't really like want to go back to nine to five. I knew I need to make some major changes. And I knew the biggest thing was that I wasn't making it like an impact. I wasn't, it wasn't even, I wasn't making the impact I wanted. I just wasn't making an impact at all. And that really, I'm trying not to swear too much here, but um, <laughs> I have like, very strong emotions about <laughs> this topic. Um, that really did not make me very happy. Um, and yeah, I just started experimenting with, with different things and found a couple of things that worked, found a couple of things that didn't work and kept focusing on those that worked. And that was about a year and a half, two years ago when I was in the hospital. Um, and things really took off after that experience. Yeah. So what was the pivot point that made things take off? Like, what do you attribute that to? Hmm. Um, I think there was a, a lot of different things that just kept building on top of each other. But the biggest thing I started doing differently was to start adding my own, own personality to my business and to my marketing. Because at that point, before like the burnout, I was generally bored with my own marketing. Like I love marketing to bits. <laughs> I love everything about marketing, learning about it, helping people do it, doing it myself. But even creating my own content, like I was getting bored creating my own content. 
So you have to imagine like how bored must the people felt reading the content I felt bored creating, right? Yeah. Like that's not really uh, the best approach for your business, especially if you're a personal brand, if you're selling services, if you're the face of your brand, <laughs> that's um, a bit of a recipe for disaster. So I started experimenting with adding more fantasy to my business. Um, I started talking about the dog that we had just got, the puppy um, I named Frodo. He's the main character from Lord of the Rings. I started talking about like, oh, I'm, you know, my sister's visiting and we're doing a Harry Potter marathon this weekend with all the movies. Just like, the, like just testing the waters because um, I always felt that people would think I'd be really childish and unprofessional if they knew how much like I love fantasy or how many like video, how many, how many hours every week I spent playing video games, for example. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was, it was just like step on step, like, you know, I did a, a, a brand photo shoot, um, which had a great impact. I started redesigning my website, which had an impact. I just changed my colors. And then I did the content quest. Um, this is um, a virtual event that I created and hosted, um, which is, and the idea there is that you co-create content. We have a co-working day. You get the tools to create, to batch create strategic, strategic, strategic yeah, sorry. <laughs> You get the tools to batch create strategic content to grow your business. And then we have the co-working day. So you get accountability and support to actually create that content. Um, and I went, when I was planning the content quest last year, I said, if I'm doing this, I'm going all in. So I literally went through all my emails and my copy and I was like, I'm going to add in as many fantasy and geek references into this as I like possibly can. Um, so I was like, I went Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Doctor Who, Sherlock, like all these different like fandoms and I put everything in. Um, and I actually ended up winning an award for the content quest, uh, which from the con club, which was really, really cool. Yeah. So, um, the running the content quest got me a lot of visibility and winning the award got me a lot of visibility and credibility. So that was really a big turning point in my business that I feel that the content quest really helped establish my brand. A lot of like a lot of people suddenly knew who I was. Um, yeah, so there were like a lot of steps that led up to that point, but then that would be like a big turning point, I think, for my business. Yeah. And now did you feel a little nervous to put yourself out there in that <laughs> way? Being so I was terrified. Okay. I was terrified. Yeah. yeah. I was terrified. It was totally freaking out about it. Um <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um so I think so many times we do play it safe because we're afraid of it flopping or being judged or it just being yeah. so different, especially you've got a master's in this. And so I think I've heard you talk before that you, you wanted to make sure people took you professionally serious yeah. and you know, that the fantasy theme might have drawn people away from that. But I think it did yeah. the opposite for you. It really, especially for this audience, um, really set you apart as being unique. And that's what, you know, draws people to you. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I, yeah. Um, I think that's also because um, I grew up in Singapore and I went through the local school system. So that was very competitive and it's very like your life path is set in stone. You go to the university, you get a good internship, you get a good job, you just climb the corporate ladder and that's it. There's no other options for you basically. Um, so I think I was still really stuck in that kind of mindset of you want to appear perfect. You don't want to make any mistakes. You um, want everything to be able to have this really polished surface. And what's been so interesting is that every time I try and crack that service and I say, Hey, you know what? I screwed up or like this happened or this is what I learned. And I really try and talk more about my journey that always helps draw more people in, which I thought, I, I thought was so fascinating because when I was starting my business and talking about like the things I knew about marketing, like crickets, no one cared. Although I was sharing like, yeah, I've got a muscle in this. I know what I'm talking about. No one cared. But as I share more personal stories, it could be like, you know, what's going on in my life, or it could just be like a business story. Like here, here's what happened. Here's what I learned, whatever. And that process is absolutely terrifying, but I can see each time I do it, I break down some barriers and I, I help create more relationships and building a business, especially building an online business. It's all about those relationships. You know, the, I mean, you know, I, I don't have to explain that to you, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you no, know definitely, that. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So 
what are some tips for others of how they can add their personality into their business in a similar way, but for, you know, obviously brand it for them. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think you necessarily have to have like a thing. I feel that the fantasy video games, that's really my thing, but that's, that's been something that's been part of my life since I was basically four years old and I saw my first computer game. <laughs> I mean, for Harry Potter fans, this is like, this is on my desk. My Hogwarts letter <laughs> is in the post. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, one tactical action step I tell some of my clients who come to me with this issue is to record yourself. Like, get like your like if you can get a business bestie, that would be great. Like someone you know who knows you well, especially if they're like have their own business as well, and have a conversation with them like this over Zoom or something, and record yourself talking. And just like have a coffee chat, talk, chat about like the challenges in your business. I kind of then go back and watch the recording and try and pick out like, what are you laughing about? When do you start appearing serious? Like these kinds of things that make up your personality because a lot of people go like, Oh, but Maggie, like I don't have a thing. I'm not into fantasy. Like I don't have that thing to build my brand. Like, you don't need to, like you can build like you are your own thing. I don't know if that sounds really lame, but just like looking at your own personality, and thinking, what can I draw out of that that is still relevant to my business and can make those connections and make me seem like more, uh, a more complete human online? Yeah, and I think that'll really help people stay authentic too because I've never thought about doing that, of recording yourself so that you can really grasp your own personality from an outsider's point of view when you go back and watch it again. Yeah, because like a lot of people don't think they're interesting like when you think about personalities, you, I know I was like, I was like, I don't think I'm that interesting. Like I don't have any aspects of personality that are like, like I'm not fabulously charming or witty or whatever. I like to think I'm witty, but yeah. Um, but it's just trying to see who you are as a real person when you kind of in your element, like in your own natural habitat. Um, for me, I know I like, I love speaking like this one-on-one -on -one with people. So if that's your thing, then like recording that conversation and just seeing like, what are we laughing about? Where do I get really animated? Because for me, the reason I started doing more fantasy in my business is that I had so many people tell me that you, when you start talking about video games, when you start talking about Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter, you mentioned that your eyes start shining. <laughs> so like I literally had that feedback from people. So I knew that was like the right next step for me. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, do you think that when you're looking at your audience, do you build kind of a theme or you're kind of pull the parts of your personality that fit your audience or do you let your personality draw in the right audience? You know, it's kind of like chicken and an egg situation. Um, I feel I've definitely taken parts of my personality and I've built my brand around that. And those personality parts help draw in the audience. So, so it's like a cycle almost. Yeah, I guess so. Like, um, there's some things I don't really talk about in my business. Cause I don't think that that relevant to the brand I'm trying to build. Like I really like fantasy, uh, fantasy. I really like jazz, um, uh, like Michael Bublé, um, like the old school, like classic musicals, that kind of like Broadway. I'm really into theater. Uh, I don't really talk about that too much cause I feel it's not that relevant to my business. Um, but like one thing that did help me with the personality stuff is that I knew I wanted to work with stronger personalities. I knew I wanted people who were like not having being wallflowers. They wanted to make an impact. They wanted to, to leave, them, leave their mark on the world. And I knew those people would feel intrigued if I use stronger language. So that's why my one-on-one -on -one service is called Slay Your Strategy. That's why my business audit service is called The Battle Plan. And like on my website, I have, um, I say I work with fiercely dedicated entrepreneurs. It's like those, those words are chosen for a reason because I want to draw in those kinds of personalities. And if there's someone who needs a very soft approach, I'm probably not the best fit for them, but they're going to know that because they see fiercely dedicated, fiercely dedicated and they're like, whoa, that's not for me, which is great. It's a win-win. <laughs> yeah. Now, how did you come to discover that that's your audience? Was it trial and error or did you know all market along? research? Okay. So what, what was involved? Research. What was involved um, in that? This is basically doing target market interviews 
Um, essentially, like in a nutshell, in a non-scary version, is that you do this and you talk to people and you ask them questions. That's it. Um, but there's a bit of a process involved um, in trying to uncover the deeper problems people have, not just the surface level stuff of, oh, I want to be more visible or I want to make more money, get more clients, but what are like, the underlying reasons for that and what are the underlying challenges below that surface level stuff? Um, and that's what you want to focus on. Yeah, I think that's great because so often you see people, when they just start, they just jump in and pick a niche without really talking with people or figuring out, like I did the same thing when I was taking my business, my brand design business full time and transitioning from my corporate job. I was just looking at other people's websites and yeah. seeing, you know, I'm like, Oh, these look like people I'd want to work with. But as I dug deeper into brand strategy, you know, I thought I wanted to work with photographers that like, or wedding photographers who are all business to consumer. But as I got going with my brand strategy and digging deeper into that, I realized I was much better and enjoyed working with business to business owners. And so my whole branding was set for wedding photographers instead of working with coaches and marketing yeah. strategists. So, you know, it would have definitely been good if I had just chatted with people from the start and didn't have to figure it out after just yeah. a whole website and branding for one. I think, I think a lot of people feel it's a waste of time or that it's really scary because you have to go like talk to these people you don't know and ask them questions. Like that is really, it can be really intimidating. Um, and I felt the same way, but the, the, the problem is, and this is I think where my academic background comes in is that you can't build your business or your marketing on assumptions. Yes. And that's what so many, I don't know, but I, I feel it's especially women as women, because maybe we feel intimidated by having to go out and like ask people these, these questions like we make so many assumptions when building our business especially like on ideal clients um, I have a unique hatred for I like ideal client avatar exercises that don't link to market research or like actually talking to people um, because you make assumptions and then you wonder why you're not getting clients yeah. And I think some of those avatar exercises, they talk about, Oh, where does, you know, what type of ice cream flavors does your client like? And you know, that doesn't really define anything about who they are as a person and what they're looking for in business. So it's important. It doesn't like there is some level of importance of that, not necessarily the ice cream flavor, but like, like your favorite drink or your daily routine, um, because it looks at like the type of personalities you want to attract. So for example, someone who likes drinking, let's say double espressos every morning, or someone who takes a matcha green tea, like there is some that you know already just by, with like saying like, this is what these two different people drink in the, every morning, you know there's a difference in how they behave and how they approach life, right? Yeah, that's good. What so, are some other kind of traits that you look for in people that define, you know, their personality and how you can connect with them? Uh, for me, it just does go back to the language. Um, you're kind of putting me on the spot here. It's like, oh crap, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to go to sleep right now. Um, no, I think for me, it goes back to the language. So I know if I say, do you want to work with me? And it's called Slayer Strategy. And if someone goes, oh, that sounds interesting. Tell me more. You know, again, that they're drawn by that strength of those words. And there's people like, Slayer Strategy, whoa, I don't want to know. I want a cheerleader to hold my hand, which is perfectly fine. It's just then you know that I'm probably not the best fit for you. Yeah. And That's, this is, I, I can see why, you know, it is so important. And I try to stress this for my clients of, you know, narrowing down who you work with and getting specific because if people say, oh, I work with online entrepreneurs or creatives, yeah. it's like, who, who is that? Yeah. And it doesn't really give you any yeah. direction and people aren't going to connect with that. So the thing is they try to not exclude anyone by saying, oh, I work with everybody. But yeah. then it's just watered down and, you know, somebody might say they might want that Slayer strategy and they're looking at your website and seeing that versus someone that's like, I will help you with marketing. They're like, whoopee. Exactly. That's what I, that's what, that was me. That was me two years ago. So yeah. like, I'm not, you know, <laughs> that's exactly the process I had myself. Yeah. Um, the, the problem with this, with not getting specific is that you can't build relationships because mm -hmm. Exactly those two examples you said, Slayer Strategy versus I can help you with your marketing. Well, A, no one cares about you helping me with my marketing. I want to grow my business. I want to get more clients. I want to make more impact. I want to have freedom. I don't care about my marketing. My marketing is a tool that's going to help me get to where I want to go. Right? 
Yeah. So it's again, so looking at, <laughs> it's again looking at that assumption because you as the expert, like, and that was my situation. I, I was like, oh my God, everyone needs a digital strategy, right? Duh. Like, I'm not even going to explain why you need one because it's so obvious. <laughs> but again, people don't care about the fact they need a digital strategy. They care about the fact that they want to streamline the business. They want to spend less time working in their business and more time working with the clients. Um, and they want to get more visibility. They want to have like increase coming in basically on automatic if possible. And that's where the strategy comes in. Yeah. So I, I love how this does go with the, like, take back your impact. It's, you will make such a bigger impact when you are specific and you're speaking the language of your clients and yeah. you're able to reach more people. And so your business will be growing while also being able to help, you know, other people. Absolutely. And the thing is, I just want to bring up um, the, the niche um, aspect because I personally, I don't really have a niche. Um, I don't, when I started my business and like kind of with and burnout, when that was happening, I was really, oh my gosh, I need to like niche down. Like, do I need to like start focusing more? And I really didn't want to. And I was getting all these like people saying, oh, you should do just like launch strategy. Or you should just do like for this kind of like industry. Um, and I didn't, I kind of just stayed where I was, but I started changing my language, my personality and like my branding to capture a certain kind of personality. So like right now I'm working with business coaches, academic editors, designers, tech people, um, creatives. Like it's a, my clients right now are in a very wide array of industries, which for me is so fascinating because I get to work with all these different types of industries, but I can clearly see they all are kind of similar people in terms of their character, their personalities, their approach. Yeah. They're all having that strength. Yeah. So you don't, if you niche down, if you want to focus, you don't, it doesn't necessarily need to be like on a certain type of industry. It can just be on personality traits. Yeah. Well, I like to say in my classification strategy guide, I have the section on trying to figure out kind of narrowing your niche. And, mm -hmm. but what I do is look at like, where do you want to differentiate yourself? Because for mm -hmm. some people, they might be excellent at, they just provide the fastest service, quick turnaround. So they're yeah. the ones you go to when you need something fast. Yeah. And for other people, they want the highest quality that they can get. They don't care if they have to wait six months, yeah. you know? And so you just have to figure out what is my specialty and what sets me apart. And then you're not competing with everybody. You're competing in your own market and you're your own yeah. thing that people will turn to for that reason. Absolutely. And that's something that my rebrand has really, I feel so much more comfortable with competition online because my brand is now based on my personality. Like, yeah, there's like, you can get like a thousand other strategists or coaches or whoever. It doesn't have to be me, but it's no longer, I know people who hire me are going to hire me for me, not because of like how my package is structured because it's so much more my personality and my style of work. So that's like a big, I think that's a big advantage of focusing in on your branding. Yeah, definitely. So how can others kind of do the same thing of having, creating high impact, you know, marketing for themselves? I think it really comes down to what your goals are and what you actually want to achieve with your business and with your life. Um, because you don't have to create another course just because everyone else is doing it or host a virtual summit just because everyone else is doing it. So I think, a uh, this is going to sound a bit woo-woo, but a lot of it does come down to like what you truly want to do. Like if I just sit you down right now and say, like, don't think about anything. Don't think, look, don't like self edit or self censor. What would you love to create right now? Um, and just get it done. And that's kind of like, this sounds like really simplistic, but that's what the content was. I was like, oh my gosh, this is an amazing idea. I want to do this virtual car working day to batch create content. And then I just like, and within four weeks it was live. Yeah. And I had, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> and I had like, it, I had no idea if it was going to work. Um, I did validate the idea that like I asked around people like, Oh my God, that's an amazing idea. And I went ahead and did it. You know what? Sometimes things flop and I've had launches where I, I thought this is an amazing idea. Tried it. Didn't work. All right. Then you'll just learn from that experience. So a lot of it just comes down to looking at, what you want to create and what do you feel 
is the gap in the market, not necessarily like not looking at what everyone else is doing. That is so good and so important for making an impact and taking back your business because I experienced a similar thing where with building out Bosscation, I had this mm -hmm. idea from the start. My idea was, okay, I want to help people take action in a way that they're actually going to get things done. So, so many people start online courses and never finish them and they forget yeah. about them because they're online. And I was like, I want something physical because for me, the weekend that I came up with it, I had been writing in a physical notebook and had so many aha moments and you get, your brain gets into create mode instead of on the computer, you're in edit mode. And so I really want wanted Bosscation to be the physical strategy guides and the physical box to help it feel like a whole retreat. So, so many people kept telling me that, oh, you're going to, you know, have issues with filling orders and it's going to be such a pain. You should just put it online, make it a course. And I really struggled with the decision. Do I ditch the box and the physical strategy guides or yeah. do I, you know, continue with my original idea? And every time I kept going back to my notes of how I came up with the idea. Yeah. And I was like, you yeah. know what? I have yeah. to stick with this. And so far, all of my beta testers have loved the physical strategy. Yeah. Yeah. That's so important. Because I was going to say as well, this is a concept that I myself, like I have to keep coming back to it. I have to keep coming back to it because, um, so I was, I've been playing the content quest again for this year, like the new version and kind of the weight of the first one was like on my shoulders. The fact that it won an award, the fact that it got so much visibility, the fact that people have been asking me what am I doing next one. And like, oh my God, I have to do this amazing, like massive launch and I had this crazy plan. And when it came time to actually do the start implementing plan, I, I just shut down. Like my graphic designer was emailing me for the copy. <laughs> my VA was emailing me for whatever. And I was like, I'm just gonna ignore these emails and like things are gonna go away and sort themselves out. Um, and then I had to like, I literally went back to like, why did I do the first content quest? Like what made it so fun? What made it such an experience? I was like, all right, it's the gamification. It's the fantasy. It's the fact that I really wanted something that's gonna help. So I slashed my entire launch plan. I redid like the structure of the next, the content quest. And I was like, I'm just going back to like what I want to create because with online business, like a lot of it is strategic and I am doing the content quest in a strategic way, but a lot of it also comes like those relationships and that how you get remembered is also just being, I don't even want to say this is going to sound so woo, -woo but it's about being true to what you want to create because you have that passion within you for a reason. <laughs> um, and you, you need to tap into it. Like, yes, you need to be strategic. Yes, you need to learn about SEO and processes and systems and the right way to do stuff. But you need to add in your own passion and your own fire so that you start standing out and you can build relationships and you get remembered. Yeah. I know I, when I was building out the different Boscation strategy guides, one of them that people had said that they would want to work on on a Boscation was planning and kind of like a, a year long, you know, goal planning. And so I created a goal planning strategy guide, but halfway through creating it, I'm like, this isn't me and I haven't tested yeah. this myself. And so I sent it out to one beta tester and she, she liked some parts, but it was definitely a little like overwhelming overall and I realized I'm like I need to cut this one at least until I can figure out my best way of goal planning for the year and yes. you know you you kind of have to I was going with what people said they wanted but if I lose clients because I'm not selling that one it's okay I'll find clients that are better fit for my best strengths yeah in the other strategy guides agreed agreed I have so many like half-finished projects for the exact same reason I was like this isn't I'm doing this because I saw someone else doing it and I thought it would be a great fit. But if, yep. if you don't have that passion for it, like you're not gonna, no. Yeah, people can go get power sheets to do their goal planning. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> so, um, so on the business side of things, just in general, how do you balance kind of your business work for you and creating the content quest and then doing your client work? Um, I've dropped, I'm trying to set aside, um, or I try to set aside um, time each month um, as like my power days of like working on stuff. Um, I, I have a bit of ADD um, where I like literally, <laughs> if I don't have things set in my calendar, it's just not gonna happen. 
So I literally need to say, okay, for these three hours, I'm working on creating like the content for landing pages and you know, sign up forms, whatever. Um, so yeah, simple answer. It has to be in my calendar. Um, I have client calls from Tuesdays to Thursdays and my Mondays and Fridays are usually like the admin days and working on stuff in my business. So, but even within those days and you say, okay, these are three hours, they're blocked out for exactly this one thing. Um, I do have one thing that helps my productivity. Um, so I actually just moved house, which is why like there's nothing behind me, but I do have my hourglass on my desk. Um, this is a 10 minute hourglass. And this is great like for those annoying tasks that you don't feel like doing where you just put it on and get it done. And that's very helpful in these like power, power days. Yeah, that I love that because I I'm also kind of ADD when it comes to things too. That I'll get an email and suddenly I'll want to answer the email, and then in the email I am reminded that I need to work on something yeah. else, and so I'm jumping between tasks and never accomplishing one. And yeah, and at the end of the day, you're like, oh my gosh, like what did I actually do today? Yeah, and I'm exhausted, but none of my goals are checked off. So that's yeah. why I'm I'm being like a much more intentional, like with my calendar, with my time here's what needs to get done. Facebook can wait. Yeah, so I cut out newsfeed from Chrome. There's a Chrome extension <laughs> that's kill yeah. newsfeed. And yeah. yeah, so that I'm not distracted when I go on to check groups or notifications yeah. that I don't get just caught up in looking yeah. at newsfeed for hours. Yeah. I've done a couple things for that. So I have newsfeed eradicator on my Google Chrome. Um, I have um, unfollowed and left a bunch of groups. Okay, I'm still in like 200, but you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've taken off all my notifications. So I don't get notifications if a friend posts in a group, only like in two communities I'm in that I are paid and I want to get those not notifications, but otherwise all my notifications on Facebook are someone tagging me or commenting on my post or something along those lines. So I used to like wake up in the morning and have literally 120 notifications on my Facebook. So you're well, like spending yeah, 45 minutes that's... just replying and just dealing with that. Yeah, I was getting to the point where I had maybe 50 every time I checked Facebook, mm -hmm. which was a lot. So yeah, I did the same thing of turning off the notifications. And then if I need to go into a group to, you know, if I want to have that time, then I'll go into the individual groups yeah. rather than exactly. just constantly yeah, yeah. being in everything. And uninstall the app from your phone. And the same thing, to yeah. I do have Instagram on my phone, but I have my notifications off. So I have yeah. to physically go into Instagram to see what's happening. Yeah. So in general, just to wrap things up, if you could provide one piece of advice on how to either take back your biz, take back your life, or take back your impact, what would you say to people? For business, it's definitely looking at what your goals are. Um, if that's you want to get more visible, so you want to get more followers on social media, or you're just like looking to make more money, or you're getting more credibility, what are you actually aiming for right now? Like even for the next quarter of the year, for example. Um, and honestly, a lot of that is going to lead back to market research. If you want to grow your business, you need to understand your audience at a deeper level. And that means you need to get on the phone with them and talk to them and ask them questions. Um, and really focus on building relationships. I think that's, we've now brought that up a couple of times. And I think that's what so much of this comes down to. How can you build strong relationships with your audience, which means that that's your marketing, that's understanding your audience, and that's your branding, like how, how do you bring in your personality into your business and into your marketing. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be scary, people. So Maggie and I met, we had seen each other around in Facebook groups, and one day we were just commenting on the same Facebook thread in a group, and I was like, hey, we should set up a coffee date, and Maggie's like, uh, how about right now? So we did, we just jumped on Skype and, you know, met. Yeah, but like I also want to say like, with all these things, because um, I'm getting you know messages now um, from people like, oh, like I love your brand, or like this is amazing, like how you did it. I'm like, well, I have been terrified every step of the way. Like well, the first time I mentioned Lord of the Rings from Harry Potter, I was terrified. I was like, oh my god, people are gonna think I'm completely crazy, or they're gonna think I'm childish. And instead, everyone, oh my god, I love Harry Potter. Like, or who's your favorite character, or these kinds of of things. Um, so each step has been terrifying and putting yourself out there more and more, getting more visible. Like it is scary. So if you're building a business that has a personal brand, um, you need to create more of an impact. You need to create more visibility and you need to create those relationships. Like there's no getting around it. Um, and if your business doesn't run at, on referrals at this point, so if you're not getting enough clients just automatically coming to you from people you already know or from your past clients, 
your marketing and your online business strategy is incredibly important. A lot of that is like, how can you create a higher impact? So how can you put in fewer hours into what you're doing and work more effectively? So those same hours you're using have a higher impact on your business. Yeah, so important. So I know that you have a market research and training video kind of workbook and video for people. So where could they find that and where else could they find you online? Um, you can find that at maggieyield.com slash get inside their heads. And I guess we're going to be linking to that yeah. page somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So go look in the notes. Um, and you can find me on, uh, I'm doing YouTube now. I've got a YouTube channel where I share um, tips and tricks and strategies and all those crazy things. Um, and on Instagram as Maggie Gila. And uh, something that would be interesting if anyone who's kind of going through a burnout process or and like resonated with what I said at the beginning of this interview with dealing with burnout and feeling really overwhelmed and not actually getting anywhere that hamps the wheel cycle, which is what I went through. I have a free video series on my YouTube called From Burnt Out to Booked Out, where I literally walk people through these are like the three major changes I did after my burnout that started making an impact. So that's for free. There's no page. I'm just like, I don't care if you don't hire me ever in your life, as long as you just like go do these things I'm telling you to do, it's going to help your business and your life. So please go do it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. So for those who are watching, thank you for tuning in. If you like this video, give it a like, a little thumbs up, and uh, you can let us know in the comments kind of what resonated with you the most. And don't forget to catch all of the interviews at bosscation.com forward slash take back your biz, where you can also hear more details about the free challenge coming up to help you find more freedom and joy in your business. And also all the amazing giveaway prizes that we have. So thanks all for tuning in and uh, talk to you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.